All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Trey Smith here. Really excited to shoot a video for you guys. It's been a while. Been wanting to shoot some, and I'm excited to do this one especially. If you haven't heard the big news, Billbox was acquired by a company called App Onboard. They make some really cool software, and their flagship software is called Studio. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Billbox 3 and export your game and make it into a playable ad that you could run traffic to, an HTML5 demo, some really cool ways to use our sister software studio with BuildBox. So I'll walk you through this and how it works real quick. Obviously, this is BuildBox. If you're on this channel, you know that. And this, which kind of does look a little bit similar. We got some node type structure going in here. I'll go over that. This is Studio, and this is the software that App on Board makes. So what I'm gonna show you guys is how we're gonna export some videos from BuildBox, put it into here, and we're gonna create a little demo of our game. And this is gonna be really cool because we don't have HTML5 yet in BuildBox, and you can make a little demo version of your game in HTML5 with this. Again, a playable ad, some really cool stuff, even a Google Instant Play app if you wanted to do that. All right, so first off, let's go back to BuildBox. And I'm going to quickly walk you through this pretty cool game here made by the one and only Nick Rodinko, who's CTO at Build Box. And this game is uh, got a little bit of history. It's called Milo in the Shadow. This was the last game that Nick and I were working on before we decided to get into game builders and start what would eventually be Build Box. This was the last game. It was stuck in development hell for about 12 months, uh, but it was a really cool game. Now, it looks a little bit weird right here, this character. His name is Milo. The reason is this is a 2D character in a 3D world, but you're going to see in a second, you really can't tell. But you can see this is an actual nice looking platformer here. Got some cool assets and uh, we're going to do some pretty cool stuff with this. So before I do anything, I'm just going to go ahead and play it so you guys can see what this game looks like. All right, so this is Milo here. As you can see, even though he's 2D, it looks really good in the game here. We have some objects, and the goal is just not to run into stuff and uh, make it through to the end. Now, typically, a game like this, I might would make a true platformer. You move around, all that kind of stuff. But on mobile, it kind of feels weird using the joystick. So we just went with the runner style gameplay for this, which is going to be perfect for this example. All right, now for this example, what we're going to do is record video of our game and turn that into a demo. And we're gonna have it so we explain a little bit about how this game works. And imagine that this is a playable advertisement you might see while surfing the web, or even a Google Instant Play app that you would see right next to where you could download it to try it right now for free. So the first thing you'll wanna do is record gameplay of your game. If you're on a Mac, you can use ScreenFlow. That's one of my favorites. Camtasia is a very popular one for PC. There's also a lot of free ones out there as well. If you just Google screen cam recorder, then you can find out the best one for you. And then what you wanna do is record various states of your game. You wanna record dying at every single section. You wanna also record being successful at that section then dying at the second one, and then you want to also record passing the second one as well. And when you're done recording, you're gonna have multiple files like this. So you can see right here, Milo stops right before the jump, then the next file is him actually jumping all the way to the next one, and then we're gonna have a little split, and then he jumps, so forth and so on. You might have noticed I also put some callouts here, and this is all in the software ScreenFlow. I really like this software, really easy to use, and this is kind of cool, so it teaches you how to play the game. This would be perfect for a demo. So it's gonna actually pause right here, and then when the player touches the screen, then the character is going to jump and continue. And then of course we could go on through these and see the ones where he actually doesn't make it, how he has a full run that makes it to the end, etc. It ends up being seven different video files when I was done, and it took me about 15 minutes to record these, edit, and export. All right, guys, now that we have our assets, we're in studio. Now we're gonna create a new project. We'll call this Milo Test, and we want this to be landscape and orientation, and we're gonna click on Create Project. Now, one thing I thought was really cool when I met John and Adam and Brian, the whole team at App on Board, is how similar the software is. It's laid out in a very similar way. We have a lot of the actions and the assets on the left-hand side over here. We're gonna mainly work in the middle part here, and then we have properties, and they also use the terminology scenes, similar that we do with BuildBox. Now, it is different software, so I'm gonna walk you through it now. The first thing we're gonna do is add some assets. And of course, we already have these videos, so we'll go ahead and add those. And I can just drag and drop them right into the software. 
Now, if we wanted to, we could automatically create scenes, but I wanna make sure you guys know how this works. So we're gonna say we're gonna do it manually this time. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is on the right-hand side, I'm gonna click on properties. And we can see right now it's showing our scene properties. Now, this is going to be a little bit similar to BuildBox where you have a scene. This is gonna be where you start when you actually load up this app. Doesn't matter if it's a Google Play Instant, if it's an HTML5, right when it's loaded up. Now, I'm gonna call this start because it is gonna be our first scene, just like you see right here. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is add an action. And I want to play a video. And you can guess it, the video I'm gonna choose is gonna be 01.mp4. That's the first video of Milo running right here. Now I'm not gonna loop this, and I'm going to have it play on enter. So this is right when it starts up, boom, we're gonna immediately play this video. Now I'm gonna go down here, we can actually play this video so you can see it. And again, it's him just running over to the first ledge, and then it pops up, tap screen to jump. And you saw how I made that in screen flow a second ago. Now I can see here it's about 1.7 seconds is when this video ends. And we can see exactly when it ends and when this pops up to get more information. So what we're gonna do here is add a gesture, okay? And we're gonna do that by doing show element. I'm gonna scroll down here and choose show element right there. And we're gonna choose a gesture. It's gonna be a new element. We can see these popped up right here. And I'm going to drag it onto our screen right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rename this. First, I'm gonna make it take up the whole screen. And I'm gonna rename this to be gesture and scene one. That way I can just remember specifically what this one is. Now, what does that mean? Well, gesture area is an area set up that we can do multiple things. We can do a lot of different really cool stuff. But in our example, I want to use it for a tap because I got tap screen to jump, right? So as soon as that happens, we're gonna add a transition and that's gonna make us go from this start scene to a new scene, all right? But we need to add a new scene here. So I'm gonna click on scenes. We're gonna click add a scene. This one's gonna be called scene two. Very unoriginal, but it works. So let's go back to scene one here. We're gonna click back on this gesture area and we're gonna make sure that after we touch this, because remember, we're gonna play this video, boom, pop up, tap screen to jump. When they do that, they can't even die right here. We're not gonna even let them hit this. It's gonna be required that we stop and allow them to do it, okay? Then we're gonna choose, we're gonna go to scene two. Now, of course, there is no scene two. There's nothing there. So we're gonna go click on scenes up here, select scene two, and then we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna first play a video, and as you can guess, it's gonna be 02.mp4. This is gonna be the successful jump. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna add another gesture area. We're gonna do that by showing an element. And of course that element is going to be a new one. And I'm gonna surprise you here. We're gonna call it gesture scene two. Again, not original, but it works. We're on scene two still here. I'm gonna rename this to gesture scene two. And what happens when they touch this? Well, first off, let's play the video and see. He's gonna run, boom, we have it one more time. They can't die, we're helping them out here. And we're gonna say, look, we wanna tap. And when they do tap, we are going to add a transition again from scene two to, we don't have scene three. We could type in new scene right here though, if we want to. But you know what? I like doing it the, the old way. So we're gonna go up here to scene and we're gonna add a scene and type in scene three. We're gonna go back, click on this gesture area again, make sure, look at that, I already did it for me. So I guess I didn't have to come back. That's something I learned today on this video too. All right, so cool. So now it's gonna go automatically to scene three. Now again, if we wanna preview, we can just click the preview button here and we can actually see this, all right? So we're getting there, boom, it stops, he jumps. Boom, it stops, of course, nothing's gonna happen now because we haven't actually done anything with scene three. So again, we have our scene browser right here. We're gonna click on three, we can go back and then we can play the next video. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little speed time now to catch up so I can show you guys exactly how this works and you can see the changes for when they do die. All right, guys, now we have everything in place. Let me show you something really cool. You can see we have all of our different scenes here. Start scene two all the way down to scene five. We have some fells. Now we have some actual logic going on in here, right? If we don't make the jump, I'll explain that 
in a minute. If we click on path view up here, we can actually see how this game can progress. How cool is that? And actually see when people are tapping and what scene they're going to, when they fell, and actually watch the logic. That's all built out for you. You don't have to build this out. You just click on path view after you've added in all your videos and scenes in this case. And look, I want to mention something before we go further. We're just messing with the gesture areas. This is like just the intro level. There's so much stuff you can do here with containers and actual go to scene buttons and app store buttons. You can do replays. And then we can even get in deeper and say, hey, look, when someone does click here, I want to instead have it where it's a touchdown, a long press, a swipe up, swipe right, an angle mode, and actually have the specific angle they go in and more. So there is a lot that we can do here. A lot of cool stuff. Okay, I want to go back over here to scenes though. And I want to talk about what happens at scene four. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is just play this. So we see he's running, he's running, and then boom. Now we have to make a decision. What's going to happen? Now, if it's successful, if we do touch, and we can say, look, at this specific time, at two seconds, if they touch this area, what are we going to do? We're going to go down here from scene four to scene five, just like we did before. But what happens if they don't touch? All right, it's actually really, really simple, the logic behind this. All right, so again, we're at scene four. If they do not touch, we continue, and then we transition to scene five, fail. All right, that's the one right here. So instead of going to scene five, like we normally would, scene five, I'm going to show you. Well, boom, we made it. Instead, we're going to scene five, fell. And this is going to be boom, we fall down, and then we have game over, tap to retry. All right, so that's how it works. And the same with scene three here. You can see we have a scene four, fell. Because if scene three, if we're running here, and we don't actually make this jump, we have the option right now, this is a little bit of a longer scene, you either jump right here or you don't. And if we fell, then we move to scene, scene four fell, okay? So maybe my naming was a little strange there, but I think you get it. So now you get to make the decision what happens. You can choose the time that they have to do it. I mean, you can literally build out a full game based on this logic, which is really, really cool stuff without writing a line of code and in a very different way than BuildBox. So let's go ahead and do a quick preview. All right, so we're loading it up. Now, what's interesting, guys, this is actually HTML5 that you're looking at right now. And I know so many people wanted some sort of option to test their game to have something in HTML5. And this is how you can do that. So we're going to go ahead and jump. You can see right now it's saying, hey, listen, you know, you can't die. But here, I'm not going to touch anything instead of jumping. And boom, we're going to die. And that transition, you don't see it. It's completely smooth. We even have tap to retry in there. Again, there we go. There we go. Here we can make the decision to either jump or die. So this time we'll go ahead and jump. There we go. Then we'll die here. So guys, that's Milo in the Shadow rebuilt inside of Studio without writing a single line of code using their onboard logic. Really cool software. And I thought it made a lot of sense since we're now part of the app onboard family to show you guys how this suite of software can actually mingle and work together. So this is Trey Smith. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll talk to you later. Bye.